Welcome to the Latin MedTech Leaders Podcast, a conversation with leaders who have succeeded or plan to succeed in Latin America. Please subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, Stitcher, etc. Today, our guest is Dr. Alejandro Badia. Dr. Badia, how are you doing today? Terrific. How are you? I'm doing fine. Thanks. Very excited about our episode today. And listeners, Dr. Badia is an internationally respected hand and upper extremity surgeon and the CEO of Badia Hand to Shoulder Center in Doral, Florida. Dr. Badia graduated from Cornell University and completed his medical degree at NYU. He served as the worldwide president of the International Society for Sports Traumatology of the Hand, ISS Porth, co-founded the globally recognized Miami Anatomical Research and Training Center, MARC, which is the largest private cadaver lab focusing on education, research, and patent development. And he also co-founded the Surgery Center at Doral, an elite state-of-the-art ambulatory surgery center. I'm sure I didn't mention other accomplishment, accomplishments you have, Dr. Badia, but uh, um, I'm very thrilled to have you here today on our podcast, and I look forward to our conversation. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks very much. Um, yeah, at some point we might have an opportunity to talk about ortho now, which is uh, which is probably my biggest challenge in terms of things that I I started. So so hopefully we'll have a little bit of time for that. Excellent, excellent. All right, Dr. Badia, could you please tell uh, listeners about your journey to Latin America? How do you get acquainted with the region on a personal or professional level? Sure. So so I was born in in Cuba, and emigrated uh, through Madrid, where my my dad's family is in Valencia. And I grew up in New Jersey, which was, uh, you know, a fairly, fairly uh, vibrant la Latino population as well. And when I did all of my training in the Northeast, I really felt that I wanted to use my my Spanish skills and 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 and, and cultural uh, advantages in a city such as Miami. And so I came here 25 years ago, and very quickly realized that that Miami was really kind of one of the capitals of Latin America. And I saw this as an advantage uh, in terms of uh, colleagues being able to share ideas with uh, other orthopedic surgeons and uh, even in training, and then also with patients. So we you know, gradually become a real referral center for patients from Latin America who maybe want to get an opinion um, in the US or, or maybe even a, a procedure, uh, but realize that they don't necessarily need to go to you know, a Mayo Clinic or a big hospital in New York, and they could go, come to a, a personalized outpatient center very near the airport and with, with somebody and the staff that all speak their language and understand their culture. So that has been an exciting journey for me and something that's grown significantly during the past decade. Excellent, Dr. Padilla. So moving along here, one of the questions that I usually ask my guest, um, Alejandro, is, what trends do you see happening in Latin America that are um, that represent an opportunity for medical device companies to do business in the region? I mean, uh, let's talk about the economic, epidemiological, political, or social trends that you see happening in Latin America now. Sure. Well, you know, as we all know, um, there's often seismic uh, changes in government which affect uh, which affect the business community. But we all know that healthcare is is necessary. So I think that. Most companies who want to want to do business there probably have to work with the government uh, to some degree because there are uh, uh, hospitals and healthcare systems that are largely run by the government. But there is a very vibrant, very vibrant uh, private sector, as we know, in mo in most of the countries. I think the bigger challenges are regulatory, and I and I see that as improving. Um, my understanding is even in, in Brazil, um, they're, they're they're working now with the sort of Avamed kind of um, uh, network to be able to allow and foster innovation. And I think that American companies uh, need to have their, their foot in the door early on, because I think there's a, there is a huge uh, benefit, um, for certainly geographic. I mean, it's, it's nearby. And in many of these countries, there are uh, folks who, who, who have family or, or come here frequently. So that whereas unlike maybe other markets where you don't see as much of that, uh, certainly in Miami, uh, you know, in the community that I'm in, in Doral, I mean, 80% uh, of the people here 
are, are, are have family in, in Latin America, and, you know, in this case, uh, Venezuela, Colombia, Brazil, and th that's, a, that's a real advantage. So I think companies that recognize that uh, have, a, have a, a lot to gain. Excellent. So, Alejandro, um, I'm not sure if you are in uh, close contact with the industry, um, because uh, the next question is about how do you see companies doing first in human clinical trials in Latin America or commercializing their innovations? I mean, do you have examples of, of co in, uh, you know, companies in the industry that you're dealing with or you have dealt in the past that are doing trials or have done trials or are planning to do trials or are planning to commercialize their innovations in Latin America? Well, I, I, I know a lot are, are, are being done in, in, in Colombia specifically because of the infrastructure. You know, some, some countries I think are, are better set up for that. Um, I don't have a lot of uh, uh, personal knowledge of, of sort of the, the, the trials uh, because I, you know, I'm, I'm dealing simply with the, the orthopedic implants. And my experience is a lot of those uh, are started in, 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 in Europe or even somewhere in Asia. But I, I believe that, uh, again, because of the geography, that there is a big opportunity uh, to do this in Latin America. Um, I have, for example, tomorrow I have a, a big arthroscopy companies coming to visit our center because they're looking at a particular technology that I'll be using in the operating room. So I think besides the actual trials, they can be um, networking with us clinicians here and, and be able to actually see some of the products being used, you know, because it's already these products are already approved in the U.S., but we're, we're able to help uh, the clinicians, I think, are able to help stimulate the utilization of this by our, by our colleagues that we're constantly in touch. I mean, you know, they're, they're, they're not a day goes by where I'm not getting a WhatsApp group from, uh, from Brazil, for example. We have a big conference upcoming in August. And uh, just yesterday, my colleague from uh, Argentina was asking me for some videos of certain procedures to be able to put, uh, because they're going to be doing a, almost like a, a video book uh, so this is something that, that, that's just expanding very rapidly. So I guess the industry sees you or uh, physicians uh, like you as a bridge yeah. to the region. Absolutely. So you are able to connect industry with key opinion leaders in each country in Latin America. And that's a great position to be in, right? <laughs> it is. And, and, you know, they come here and they see these uh, products being used and then they, they want to, uh, they want to bring, you know, bring them back to their home country. So, and I think the it starts with either the patient demand or or, or the, yeah. the the clinician demand. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, the fact that we have this you know puente, this bridge here, yes. is uh, is very powerful. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. All right, so this is a general question. Um, you travel extensively all over Latin America, from yeah. what I understand. I've seen your pictures and videos in different congresses, events in the region. What do you think about Latin America as a place to do business in general? Is it fun? Is it, it boring? <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's definitely fun. I, I think you have to understand the culture. Uh, I, I think, uh, you know, as Latinos, we uh, uh, we're, we're often very family oriented. Uh, I think that um, we, we like to, to mix business and, and pleasure. And I, I, don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with that um, at all. Uh, you know, life is short and and and, you, you know, you need to. Uh, to enjoy it, so I think I think it's fine. I think it's important for companies to understand that you go there. People want to know you as a person before they do business with you. They're not going to just look at the numbers. Uh, I, I think uh, you know understanding the culture and 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 one thing that that people need to understand if they're if they don't not familiar with Latin America is even though uh, most of us speak Spanish, right, except for really uh, Brazil, um, that the each culture is very different. So, and even even the Spanish language can be markedly different in terms of the the uh, utilization, the, the vocabulary, and the slang. And so, I think it's important for 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 companies to, to realize that and, and and to know each culture. And I've always been really impressed with friends I have. Uh, I have a friend who who um, works with uh, with Arthrex, and and you know he he lived in Brazil for a while, and he speaks Portuguese, he speaks Spanish, he understands the nuances culturally of different countries. Uh, and that's an, that's an amazing thing. Uh, so yeah. I think we're, I think we're going to yeah. see more of that because I think there's just huge, huge growth potential there. Excellent. I'm very glad that you think that way. So Alejandro, let's um, move along in terms of needs that you see in Latin America. What pressing needs do you see 
uh, in the region in terms of devices, uh, newer technologies, talent? Yeah, I think, I think, you know, one thing is you need really affordable uh, implants. I mean, uh, you know, some of the economies are really moving along, but there's no question that, uh, that, that you know, most of the countries are, don't have, uh, you know, it's not Japan, it's not Germany, it's not the U.S., uh, but there is a lot of potential there. So I think it's important that uh, the, the companies price their, their, their products uh, accordingly. And I, I, I see a lot of potential uh, in internal fixation. Uh, a lot of companies have started looking in terms of you know, plates and screws. Um, and I think there's a huge growth for an area I'm interested in is in terms of arthroscopy, small joint arthroscopy, right? I think that most of my Latin colleagues are very uh, on par with uh, knee arthroscopy, for example, but, but an area that, that I'm passionate about with the wrist, for example, that's mm -hmm. that, that conference I'm going to in Brazil in August, that's gonna be a big theme, but uh, most, most um, uh, hospitals don't have access to these uh, say smaller arthroscopes and smaller devices. So I, I think that that is a, a, uh, a possibility there that, that needs, to be, needs to be recognized and the market needs to be serviced because there definitely are clinicians there who are either skilled or very quickly will be skilled, but they need to, ha they need to have the product. And uh, the other thing is that, that we, we have to be ready for a growth in outpatient surgery centers. Uh, it, it's starting you know, in Brazil, uh, they have some in, in Argentina and, and, and in Colombia, and I think we're gonna see more of that. Um, and that, that has to also be priced accordingly. But I think there's huge potential as we start realizing with this pandemic that things can move away from the hospital. There isn't, uh, you know, not everything has to be done in a big hospital, which can be, you know, can be expensive, can be inefficient, can be often impersonal. Uh, smaller centers, I think we're going to see um, in, in the future. Yeah, yeah, very good. Well said. So, Alejandro, let's uh, speak um about individual countries, so, uh, your 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 take on, on on Brazil, Mexico, Colombia. What do you think about um, the Mexican sector, medical device sector? What do you think about the Mexican talent that you encounter every day? Um, any any comments about Mexico? Well, certainly there's some challenges with Mexico with what's happening right now uh, on, on the border, and I think that um, the, the current uh, uh, government. Uh, may, may, you know, may, may lead to some challenges. Certainly, it, it's important, again, in this particular case, to work with the public sector, because right now it's going to be uh, perhaps dominated. But because of that, there, there also is opportunity uh, uh, privately, because the, the, there are going to be, there, I mean, there is a, a huge affluent population in Mexico, and they're going to be uh, seeking to, to, see, to, get, to get that care delivered. I, I know of a number of, of sort of standalone hospitals started by entrepreneurial uh, surgeons. And, uh, you know, we all know the, the, the big hospitals in Mexico City, uh, the, uh, you know, this, 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 the, uh, the um, ABC hospitals, et cetera, mm -hmm. is that they all have a huge opportunity uh, the problem is, is that American companies need to, need to learn more about them and realize that that is a, uh, market i mean mexico is a really a favored uh, trading partner with the us yes, and, yeah. and geographically they're right there so uh, i think we we need to really really pay attention to them okay so what about um colombia yeah. any comments yeah you know i think colombia you know has gone through a rough patch right but one one thing i've noticed uh, when i've gone to to lecture in colombia is it, it's uh it's ex extremely uh, organized compared to maybe some of their some of their, their neighbors. Uh, I, I find uh, culturally that that, that Colombians, um, uh, you know, can be can be very very serious, um, and that's uh, that that's you know that 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 can be very good for American businesses because they may have misperceptions about that. Um, so uh, in Colombia, there there is a very vibrant uh, orthopedic sector. Now again, I can't speak about. Uh, about other areas, but um, even my, my friends who are in, in general and vascular surgery have made similar comments. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I think uh, Colombia, there is a huge potential. I guess, I guess trauma is a big business in Colombia <laughs> with all these yeah. motorcycle accidents and the war and everything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but you know, well, fortunately that's, uh, you know, that's, that's 
that's calmed down a bit. Um, I, I don't know what what the, you know what's going what's in store is uh, for the next uh, the next government, but but certainly uh, right now I think that there is uh, there is huge potential. Um, in uh, we have to realize that population is also aging, so degenerative yes. problems. Uh, mm. uh, we we're seeing that in any any sort of more industrialized country and. And I think that uh, we're going to see that the, the, the aged, the elderly, have to be taken care of. Um, and that, that's a growing sector in that country. Yes, yes. all over so the I region. think that that's, uh, that's also a, a big opportunity. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. So moving along, um, let's talk about Brazil, the biggest market. What do you think about uh, the Brazilian economy and the sector and the, the talent available in Brazil? Yeah, well, well the, ta the talent, uh, you know, medically, maybe in some areas, maybe second to none in, in the area. I mean, I've, wow. I've been uh, mm -hmm. I witnessed I was visiting at the in a USP, the University of Sao Paulo. And, and uh, I was there when uh, they were they flew in a lady who had a bit, who had had both uh, thumbs uh, amputated in an industrial accident, and uh, it, it was it was quite amazing to watch you know two teams you know one they're preparing the thumb on the back table for the um, the vessels uh, the the quality of the microscope that came in um, certainly technically um, the, the Brazilian surgeons. Uh, uh, are really second to none in many in many cases. Wow. So I, I think it's very advanced. Uh, I think the challenge with Brazil is just the uh, bureaucracy is 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 very very <laughs> high. Um, I, I I kind of was hopeful with the current administration that um, you know that that tends to kind of want to you know suppress kind of big government that that would get better. Yeah. But um, but there is talk of that improving. So I, I it's hard to say. You know, right now there's just a a big uh, a dilemma right now with the uh, the, the Amazon uh, rainforest. So there's a lot of tension, I think. Uh, but at the same time, you know, all these ecological things sometimes cause com uh, countries to work together, and uh, there can be a downstream yeah. effect from that in, in business, certainly in medical business. But it, it'll be interesting what happens in the next few years in Brazil because I just think there's huge potential, and I don't think um, a lot of um, Americans realize how how many people live in, I mean, it's just a huge country. And, um, yes. and it's a leader in, 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 in several uh, sectors, uh, including yeah. uh, aviation. A lot of people don't know that. And, yes. and um, Embraer. So, so I, I, I think the, the, the problem sometimes with Brazil is, um, you know, same thing you might see in China is sometimes there are some knockoff uh, companies. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that companies need to be wary of that. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, hopefully the, the 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 regulatory environment will will will, will rein that in, but um, but there, there there's huge potential and and Brazilians, are, from my experience, really really love American product and they are I mean they are they are very pro U.S. Uh, as opposed to some other countries. So I, I think that's a real positive. Would you agree that the opportunity in Brazil is probably with higher end products because they have a very mature, you know, lower end, mid range uh, medical device uh, manufacturing economy yeah. or sector? They even export to many countries around the yes. world their medical devices products. Yeah, the, yeah. The the there are um, a number of areas still where the the physicians are sort of trained, but they don't necessarily have access uh, to to the product and. Um, Again, a lot of that might be that the companies realize that it's kind of tough to get your product in to that mm -hmm. country, and I'm I'm, yeah. I'm 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 really hoping that changes, and and you know maybe maybe this discussion will be a catalyst uh, to to have uh, to talk with some of the, the government uh, leaders because I think we all we all stand to benefit if we can cut down some of yes. those barriers. Yeah, it's really about the patient, yeah. Alejandro. I mean, patients have delayed access to medical innovation. I mean, by the time a product gets approved uh, by the FDA or uh, EMA in Europe, it will probably take 10 years, <laughs> well, if not more. But you know what? Gets the pandemic is, has a lot of silver linings, I believe. And uh, certainly that's another one. We saw how quickly the vaccines can cut through some of the, the red tape when you really are, are committed to do that. And uh, like you said, it's all about the patient. Yeah. And um, as long as we can, you know, you know, demonstrate that there's no harm. A lot of the other uh, regulatory bureaucratic hurdles are just fluff, and we, we we need to figure out how to how to cut through that. And I and I, I think that the current world crisis is showing us that that we need to be a little bit more streamlined. 
Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, Alejandro, moving along here throughout the region, <laughs> we're doing a journey. Yeah. Let's talk about Argentina, one of my favorite countries. What do you think about it? <laughs> well, I think, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, at least in the area of hand surgery, Argentina uh, uh, has been a leader for the past uh, 40, mm -hmm. 50 yeah. years. A lot of people don't realize that. I mean, certainly yeah. in other areas of orthopedics, but in, in what I do, um, you know, Argentinians are known for being real experts in anatomy. So anything anatomic, uh, I mean, they can really teach a, a lot of us. So they are uh, uh, very much uh, academicians. I think the challenge there is the, 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 the government, um, just when we thought maybe we would move forward, I think there, there, are, there are huge challenges and the economy is really, really suffering, which is unfortunate because there's so much potential there. I mean, at, at the turn of the century, it was a world's breadbasket. Um, Yes. They, the, you know, most of the soy in the world came from Argentina, so the, it was very uh, affluent. And I think that they still have that culture. You know, the, we we all, we always tease yeah. them as being the sort of the Europeans um, in Latin America, but it's very true. Um, and and now uh, I think that that people are realizing that what what a large country it is, and uh, and and how how the, the diversity in different areas, and there there, there is huge potential there. Um, it's just it's another market where traditionally medical education has been very, very high. So if you can mm -hmm. get product into their hands, um, you're, you're really going to have a lot of skilled users. Yeah, yeah, I think it's, it's one of the most educated yeah. countries in Latin America. For sure. So, Alejandro, and I'm getting an echo again. Hmm. I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, testing one two three one two three. But it's it's coming from me. I mean, not for me. I mean, I mean, is is going through your speakers and feeding back into your microphone. It looks like. Yeah. One two three. One two three. Still there, but let's let's finish the uh, the interview. So, Alejandro. What would you say to the CEO of a medical device company from the U.S. that is just looking at Latin America as a place to do business? What would be your muscles of wisdom to him? <laughs> well, I, I think uh, you, you'd have to go down there and, and meet the, uh, the, the the people, the clinicians. You'd want to meet the, uh, the, the the distributors and understand what what the market is like. You have to understand the the, the, the culture um, and. And then you you have to see what the uh, what the opportunity is. I mean, again, there's there's a lot of regulatory hurdles, but if you can get through those, I, do, I think there is huge potential. And I think it's many times been uh, underserved. So I, I I would be very enthusiastic. Um, there are some countries that are easier than others. So for example, you might not want to start in Brazil, even though it's such a big market. Uh, but for example, we didn't mention uh, Chile, which really works under the auspices mostly of the FDA. Um, it's a very um, uh, educated uh, populace, the, so there is uh, huge potential to at least get some traction with that product, and then and then you can kind of expand to neighboring countries. So uh, I think it's important to recognize that each country is different, and you need to, you know, almost do a, a market survey and, and 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 get to know them. Yeah, yeah. Have you heard about the Pacific Alliance? Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, I think this. Uh, would you agree that it's uh, um, uh, an opportunity for finally Latin America to get their act together, all these countries to get their act together and work in unison towards a common objective? Sure. Um, yeah, well, I mean, I think it will represent a, a paradigm shift in Latin America. Yeah, and and again, with, with culture, there is historically, you know, been tension, say, with uh, with Chile and Bolivia, or or you know, in Chile and Peru. I mean, if you if you go down there to understand the culture, you don't want to tell the Chilean that the, the pisco oh, sour, no, not at all. That a pisco sour is Peruvian, but you know, you don't want to do vice versa. Uh, but I think it's a lot tongue in cheek. I think. Uh, a lot of these people really get along very well. Uh, the reality is, I think a lot of times it's a government that creates the uh, the tension. But I think the people are are wonderful. And and I conferences I've been to where there's been surgeons from different countries. Uh, I, I think there's uh, friendly rivalries, whether it be based on soccer, right? So you have to understand it's called football there, and it, it is an institute. I mean, it's it's just it's it's huge, uh, bigger than in Europe, really, because Europe 
there's other sports, yeah. but but I think in, in Latin America, you have to understand the the, uh, the football or soccer culture. Uh, but then there are countries that are uh, sleepers. For example, Peru. I mean, the, the government's been fairly stable. Uh, so is the economy and huge potential there. Now, now that is a country that doesn't doesn't have the physician base of say of Brazil and Argentina, but there is potential. Um, so there is, um, uh, I think, real opportunity there and in Ecuador uh, and maybe even Bolivia, mm -hmm. where you, yes. you can. Um, there, there is a lot of uh, companies have shied away because they thought that their economy wouldn't be able to sustain. Uh, their product line, mm -hmm. but I, I don't think that that's true. Um, certainly in, in in Peru, I mean, one of the nicest hospitals I have visited anywhere is La Clinica Delgado in in Lima. Oh, I mean, really? it's you know they have a helipad. I have a picture with my colleague who's the, who's one of my old fellows. I trained him about fifteen years ago, and I'm very proud. He's a hand surgeon, but he's also the chairman of the orthopedic department. Um, you know, that, I did a tour at that hospital. The 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 intensive care unit was. To me, second to none. Uh, so the, you know, this is what we're seeing in, in a lot of these countries. Excellent, Alejandro. Thank you so much for game, being a guest in our show and look forward to being in touch with you in the future. Bye-bye. <laughs>